welcome. This is Mabbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Hi and welcome to Mabbit Marketing. I'm your host, Rachel Claver, and I feel a little bit self-indulgent today because I did check this with my beautiful Facebook community, Mapper Marketing, of which you are very welcome to attend and be part of, attend to join. But I asked them if how they would feel if I used this podcast episode to read to you an excerpt from my new book, Be a Spider, Build a Web, Sticky Content Marketing for Small Businesses. Now, this book is now currently on a pre-order and it goes on proper order uh, later on in a couple of weeks' time. Um, So we've got it there and it will be available anywhere that you can get digital books and e-books, but also the print copies are currently available on our website. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I wrote a book because for a start, I've written lots of books before. I haven't written a book since 2008. And I really wanted to give people who couldn't maybe work with us one-on-one or had a um, a understanding of marketing, but it really stresses them out to have a real and relevant view about why it's really important and how, how content marketing works. And this isn't a book that tells you, you need to do this sort of post on Instagram or this sort of thing on LinkedIn because those things shift with the sand, like literally the advice I'm giving six months uh, now is different to the advice I gave six months ago. And so the moment I write it in a book, it's going to be out of date. That frustrates me. (laughs) And it makes it harder sometimes to work out how to explain content marketing or what it works like. But this book is about my story as a business owner. It's about my story and experience as a content marketer. And I've tried to be very honest and tried to tell the most real story I possibly can and understand for you why it can be so hard to do your own marketing. So what I thought we'd do is we would start with chapter two. Uh, Chapter one is an introduction and it's got a whole lot of stuff in there about why you need to be a spider and all those bits and pieces. And there's like a little bit of an introduction about why the book was written and those sort of things. But I thought we'd talk about why I've used a spider's web and why it relates. So this is the premise of the book and you can just listen to this and it will be helpful to you regardless because it might help you think about how you could grow your own content web or your sticky web to capture people, to attract people, to capture people and then to keep them close to you, those who are about to buy and those who have bought before. So I'm going to read it to you. I haven't I don't know if people normally read on a podcast so it might sound a bit different but this is it Um, if you if you listen to this and you enjoy it there is the note in the show notes or you can go to beaspiderbuilderweb.com and you can get a link to the downloaded workbook that goes with the book and there's also a link there to buy the book uh, if you would like to so um, I'm going to get started and we'll see how we go I might stumble a bit because I'm reading as opposed to talking But we'll see how we go. Chapter two, the anatomy of a spider's web. When I started to find ways to explain marketing concepts in a way that people could understand or remember, I often tied them to other things I already knew a little about. A lot of the stories and analogies in this book are me doing exactly this. The most consistent one of all was be a spider, build a web. My clients and people who've heard me speak will reference it in their own posts and use the phrase to help them plan their own marketing. This book's title was born of a night of dissatisfaction about what I was writing. I was three quarters of the way through writing this book, finding it tricky to motivate myself to complete it and bothered with my original concept. So I got up in the very early morning and I slashed away at my book and I made a change. I destroyed the web I was building to make another that is more deeply anchored in who I am, what I teach, and my own voice. Several hours later, I realized I should really learn a little more about spiders' webs. For us to understand marketing of a spider, we need to understand a spider's web. Spiders make intricate webs. 
When I was eight, our teacher did an art activity I've never forgotten. I'd never recommend it to anyone to do it now. It seems pretty damaging to a spider's environment, so I'm sure it's not allowed anymore. We'd go spider web hunting in the early morning while the web was still wet with dew. We'd go out and we'd shake talcum powder all over the web and then press it onto a piece of black paper that had been sprayed with hairspray. The spider's web would then come away onto the paper and dry. We'd call it a print, but really we were stealing that spider's artwork and gluing it onto paper with some rather strong smelling hairspray. They just don't make it like they used to. While I now see that I was robbing a spider of their home, back then I was too busy being captivated by the intricacy of the spider's work. So much time was taken in creating this incredible feat of design. How the web is made. Webs come in all shapes and sizes and some created in a slightly different way. But for this, I want you to imagine a web made by a garden spider. Here's an image of a garden spider's web and there's a link to that in the downloads on Be A Spider Builder Web if you wanna have a look at it. Their webs require a lot of patience and objects to catch on. The spider starts by finding a strong anchor point. They attach their sink silk to it and spin an anchor thread to another stable surface. They then pull this thread tight to make it strong, then spin a bridging thread to another strong surface. Then travel back down to the anchor, pulling in each line so there's a strong triangle shape. From there, the spider drops to the center of the triangle, releases their spider silk, and lets the wind catch the thread. It lands on an anchor or bridge thread, and then it's pulled tight. This is the first radius of the web. The spider repeats this up to 20 times, creating radius lines from the same center, adding a few double threads to strengthen key lines or help the frame tidily or help frame the web tidily. Sorry, told you I'd stumble. Once the lines are all out, the spider checks which lines will best withstand all weathers and unexpected events. Some of the radius lines will be cut, leaving the strongest. It is now time to make the capture spiral. Starting on the furthest point of the center, the spider weaves their web, dropping their silk around an ever decreasing spiral. The closer the spider comes to the center, the closer the lines become and the stickier the web. Every now and again, the spider does a U-turn in the web and backtracks to ensure the web lines are strong, especially around the outer edges of the web spiral. Once completed, the spiral spider moves to the middle of the web, which is called the hub. This is where they wait patiently for visitors to their web. The end result of their hard work is a beautiful and intricate design, just like your content web will become. The elements of web for your business. In this book, we'll be using some of the spidery terms for web making for our content. This is two benefits. One, you get to understand content marketing with concepts that are areas normally full of marketing jar jargon, which hopefully makes it more memorable. And two, I can feel completely justified in calling this book, Be a Spider, Build a Web. Number one, the anchor point. Your anchor point needs to have a solid foundation. For you as a business, this is your values, your target market, and your pricing. If the anchor is connected to unstable ground, the entire integrity of the web is compromised. You can still spin a web, but it's unlikely to be strong enough to capture and keep all the people you're going to want to attract. You'll spend more time trying to fix the issues in your business than being able to rest and allow your web to do its thing. Spending time finding the anchor point is hard work but it's key to becoming a clever spider. The bridge thread. The bridge thread allows your web to take shape. It's the core messaging that ties everything together and allows you to spin your content. It helps amplify the stability of the anchor point. The radius. In a spider's web, there are spokes that come out from the center. In your marketing, each one of these represents a different platform for your content marketing. While many of us think of a spider's web of having many radius lines coming out from the center, some webs have far less than others. Some of the lines are shorter and others are key in helping build strength from the full web. The lines closest to the anchor are key. These would be like your website and your core social media platform, while the others just help create a full picture and allow you to increase your chances to catch your people. As you begin to build your web, you might find you have less radius lines than others. 
focus on doubling back on these lines, make them strong, and then gradually add other lines as you become more confident in use of your web. The capture spiral. Starting at the outside and moving your way in, you move around and around and create the capture spiral. For us as business owners, this means sharing your content. This gets your business noticed. It helps people connect with you, feel nurtured, and then at the center, become yours. As you move closer to the center, we want to make sure that the web gets stickier and stickier and harder to escape. The content becomes more in depth, adding deeper value. It might include offers to spend more time with you and interact with you. Eventually, they'll be invited to buy from you and will be ready. There is more room on the outside of the web to share get noticed content and less room as you move in. We need to remember to share more of this type of content than content that promotes our services. The stickiest content, the buy my stuff stuff, is shared with the least people of all. There are no dangerous gaps on our web and the capture spiral keeps our visitors safe. It helps them trust us and move closer. Our consistency in message and scheduling of content is the silk that the capture spiral is made of. The frame thread. As we build our web, we may discover overlaps between different platforms, such as a link between our Instagram account and our webinars. We can create bridge lines links to help these connect together, to make it easier for people to take quick shortcuts without having to leave the web we made. The U-turn. Sometimes we want someone to stay on our radius line. So instead of moving the spiral closer, we'll U-turn and create a few extra lines between two radii, that's a radius, two radius, to make that bond stronger and help our visitors stay on that radius line a bit longer. Maybe it's TikTok, maybe it's your website. We're sneaky spiders like that. The hub. This is where you save your stickiest silk. This is your most compelling content that's going to help them decide to pay you for hanging out on your web. Our hub is our stories, our private messages, our emails, our Zoom calls, our sales sequence. It's where we put most of our one-to-one -one energy and each person is ready for it because they've moved onto your web, down your radius lines, around your capture spiral, and now they're ready for you. I want you to build a web. I want you to imagine there's a beautiful web above you. The spider who made this was kind, let me borrow and is currently on holiday. So relax, they are nowhere near this web. I want you to see the radius lines coming from the center and the capture spiral of the spider silk moving around and around them from the outside to right to the center. Now reach up and take the center of that web and pull it down. Spider silk is elastic and very strong, so it won't break. As you pull it down, you'll see it makes a funnel shape, but with a difference. Think of every radius of the web as an entry point or platform. Now let's use that shape and think about people using it as a path to get to you right in the hub of that web. This funnel has lots of different entry points. Your job is to make sure you've got enough to attract people in different spaces. The spiral of the web is your future customer's walkway with each level allowing a place to rest if needed. We're not in a rush to push people along. We're a patient spider. We know they will come to the hub when they are ready. It is possible to move across the threads, experiencing different platforms. Sometimes someone will enter at the top and scurry along one of the spokes straight to the center. They're acting exactly the way it would if it was a funnel with a slippery slide down. But most of the time, they will move up and down, around and around that web. They find pockets where other people are hanging there and spend time there. They move closer, then further away. They don't walk in straight lines, but it's okay because they're in your web. You just need to keep them giving reasons to come closer. Your content web is just the same. One of the most exciting parts of creating a content web 
as you allow people to find you where they hang out. Your future clients and customers will come to your web at different points, depending on where you've spun your web. Most of them will enter from one of the outer edges where there's less commitment, less personal interaction, and they can watch for a while and check you're one of those kind spiders that they're looking for. Sometimes you'll get someone who jumps right in and skips to the outer parts. If they've come with a person who's worked with you before or knows you, they feel safe enough to jump into the middle tiers of your web right away. They may also do this if they're a risk taker or if they're jumping from someone's web. It's rare for most people to jump right to the center, the hub, and be ready to buy. And if they do, you'll often have to spend time in sales meetings, building rapport and trust. This is something you won't need to do with people who've hung out on your web for a while. You've already let them take their time developing their trust and they're ready. As we explained before, each radius of your web is a type of marketing. One will be your website, the rest social media platforms, marketing activities and email marketing that helps draw people in. Some will have heavier lines on the outer of the spiral, perfect for attracting new people onto your web and then less as people get closer. For instance, Pinterest is a powerful source of initial interest, but harder to keep and build engagement and community the closer people come to the center and make a purchase. Others will be sparse at the top and have a whole lot more going on closer to the hub. If webinars are part of your content marketing web, they'll only be an initial entry point to risk takers, people in intense pain, and you're meeting them at just the right time, or people who've been told to attend by someone else already on your web. No matter where someone enters our web, they get to choose the pace of the journey to your hub. If anyone enters the web halfway to the hub, they'll still move around the web in exactly the same way as if they'd entered on the outer parts of the hub or the web. Building trust takes the time it takes. And each person has a slightly different way to check the trust lines you've built. It's not our job to choose their direction or their pace. We're just here making all the paths we can to make it easier to find us at the hub. Our job is to be patient, trust in the stickiness of our web, and resist pouncing on our new visitors to bite. In other words, we need to be that kind spider. Sometimes that means showing people what we're really like. So that's an excerpt. That's chapter two of my book, Be a Spider, Build a Web. I hope you've enjoyed it and it didn't feel too weird to have that as a podcast. If you did like it or if you hated it, I'm really happy for you to tell me. You can come and be part of our Facebook group, uh, Map It Marketing, my map, oh, map It Marketing. I can put a link to it in the show notes. Um, if you have enjoyed this podcast, this isn't an average podcast for me. So please do go and listen to other ones. And if you've hated it, Maybe try a few of my other ones as well. But I really wanted to share with you a chapter from the book. Uh, one of my goals is to turn the book into an audio book. And so, and I wrote it to be potentially read aloud because I think that for me, I often like hearing an audio version of a book. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I uh, hope that it was beneficial to you. I felt like it was a good standalone chapter. Next week, it's me again. And I'm working through and talking to you around how to save time in your marketing looking forward to doing that with you have a great week until then and thank you for listening i so appreciated it if you love what you heard today be sure to hit subscribe and if you love this episode in particular i'd love it if you shared it on social media remember to tag me in so i can say thank you have a great week and we'll talk soon